Hey everyone, Deepak Sababa here, the host of The Three Questions Show. The Three Questions Show is going to be a place where guests from various parts of the world will participate and I get to ask them three questions on topics ranging from leadership to management, culture, innovation, pretty much anything under the sun. And they get to pick on my brains by asking one of those questions back at me. So let's start today's episode. Episode one is with my friend Harrison Kelly. He is from the United States. Harrison works as an SEO expert for Clean Media and he's also a podcast host. His podcast is called The Innovative Mindset and I recommend everyone listen to it. Harrison, welcome. And I think this has been quite a long time in the making, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this has been a long time coming. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for being patient with me. Can we get started? Sure, uh, yeah. So, uh, Harry, uh, can I call you Harry? But uh, anyway, so can you tell a little bit more about your podcast? Uh, what is it about? When did you start doing it? Um, so my thought process with starting it was just that, like, I love having these types of engaging conversations. Um, so I figured might as well do it. <laughs> might as well record these fun conversations that I'm having. So right. that was kind of my thought process out the gate. So okay. from there, I just pretty much used, I've leveraged a lot of the connections I built on LinkedIn to kind of set something up. Uh, and yeah, just been recording episodes ever since. And, and here we are now it's finally out. So yeah, so I've listened to some of your stuff. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's very cool. I think your podcast is going to take off very well. All the best for that. And uh, thank you so much for being my first guest on here. Uh, it's quite an intimidating experience, I must say. But, uh, well, it is what it is. And here we are. <laughs> Yeah, well, again, appreciate your patience with me. I'm I'm excited to be your first guest, and I think you have the the right mindset to to host the podcast as well. So, Harry, my first question to you is on culture. Uh, you being an American, you have your own culture, which obviously differs from uh, other countries and continents. From your workplace, or you know, through your travels, what are some of the cultural insights that you've gained that you can share with us? So it's a good, it's definitely a good question. One that I have to give a little bit of thought to. Uh, one thing that I found really interesting in my first trip to Europe that really helped me kind of identify like how important the United States is, is I, I was living in, uh, or I stayed with a friend in Amsterdam who was studying abroad there. And he had people from that Australia, the UK, uh, Brazil, um, and Germany as well. And the thing that I found so fascinating was I didn't really know too much about their poli their politics. Uh, so they were enlightening me on some of the stuff about their politics, which I found really interesting because I really like geopolitics. But they all knew quite a deal about American politics. Oh, yeah, everybody does. Do. And, and I, I talked to somebody else from Spain about this recently, just how that was so like eye opening to me. And he said, a big factor is because of the simplicity of American politics. So in most countries, there's 20, at least more than two political parties. But here it's like everyone has their defined good side and then the other side's completely evil. You know what I mean? <laughs> so here in the United States, we're so caught up in, in like domestic politics. But our impact in geopolitics, I'd say, is as substantial, if not more substantial than the stuff that's going on at home. So that's like one of the biggest things that I've taken away. Uh, another thing I think about the United States, sorry, I could be, I could be rambling here, but. No, Harry, you're not rambling, but uh, it would be good if you can also tell me how this uh, kind of affects your career or what role it plays in your job. Sure, definitely. Uh, I would say we're a very individualistic culture. It's a, a lot of us are very self-oriented here in the United States, which from, I'd say from a business standpoint can be a positive. If you think about it in the right way, I mean, my thought process is I'd rather apply the hardships that I learned to self-reflect. I'm, I'm an individual who really wants to be successful. So every time I've experienced something that was kind of had me down, I just remember the fact that I live in this country where there's such an incredible amount of opportunity. So I try and learn from it 
and scale from there to go. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why everyone loves America, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, it, it really, it, we have our faults, no doubt about it. But if you're, if you're focused and goal oriented and, and networking oriented, the, the opportunities are endless in this country. So Harrison, my next question to you is on leadership. Uh, definitely, you know, so much literature is out there on leadership, but pouring through so much of texts and, you know, going through all of that literature, I never really understood what is the cost of leadership? I personally believe a leader is born only when he makes some sacrifice. What, according to Harrison Kelly, is the cost of leadership? Uh, I think the cost of being a leader is a willingness to take some time out of your busy schedule to check in on the people that you're a leader for from a personal standpoint. I think a lot of people get caught up in numbers and results and progress, but they don't take enough time to, to identify the why. So if somebody's sales numbers are down, you could call them in as the leader and just yell at them for having their sales be declining. Or you can take a moment to say, hey, I noticed that your sales numbers are down. Is there something going on at home that's leading to this? Is there anything that's going, is there anything here that's leading to stress in your life that's a factor? More often than not, there's a deeper reason for something that on the surface might just look like a data point, you know? So I think doing that when somebody is not performing well, checking in and seeing what could be better is important. But also when somebody's doing something positive, taking that moment to address it and really hit home that you're proud of them. So I'd say the cost of leadership is just being willing to allocate time to stuff from a personal standpoint, knowing that it's going to benefit the business in the long run. Well, well put, uh, Harry. Uh, I don't think anyone could have said it better. So uh, let's move on to the last question. This one is on innovation. Uh, so I want to be able to give a context to this question. What happens from my experience is that in many companies, leaders often come to the team and say, guys, you got to be innovative. And then, of course, there's no textbook that teaches innovation. So oftentimes what happens is that the employee or the team gets very stressed out. They feel even sometimes embarrassed, you know, that they might be ridiculed if they come up with some new idea. So you as a team lead or a project lead or a company leader, what would you do to ensure that your team is being innovative? Got it. Okay. I would say um, for me, I think it kind of ties back into the last question of being keeping a kind of open door policy where people can come to you with things, mm -hmm. uh, horizontal management structure, where essentially whether you're on the lowest level of the totem pole or you're the second in command, I think that, or first in command, mm -hmm. I believe that every opinion should have merit and that a, a true innovative organization should be willing to hear any idea that somebody has. So just kind of setting the tone that, your opinion means a lot to me as the leader of this organization or of this project. And I want you, if you have any criticisms of the current way that we're doing things, thoughts about how the future is going to be different. Right. I that's that setting that tone, I think would make a big difference. The, the company that always comes to mind with me is Blockbuster, which was a big company here in the United States. I'm not yeah. sure if it was over in India as well, but they, it's so easy to get caught up in the status quo, you know? So for 30, 40, honestly, probably even longer amount of years, they were just, people were renting videos in person and that was the way to go. And that's how everybody did it. So they, the entire organization had the mindset of, we don't need to change. So they ended up laughing Netflix out of the room, out of the meeting when they tried to sell it to be blockbuster.com. So they did right. it on their own. Had they had a culture like the one I just identified, I'm sure somebody on the lower end of the of the organization might have said, look, like ordering this movie online is way easier than driving to the blockbuster 15 minutes away to pick it up. They had that structure where the CEO thought nothing's going to change. We don't need to innovate. So that's that's what comes to mind for me. Huh, perfect. OK, so last part of the show, you will get to ask me a question that you want. All right. 
Sure. Uh, we chatted about this the other day briefly, but something that I love doing as you did with me is talking about the distinctions between different cultures. So I know you spent some time in America as well as India. I would love to hear about positives that you like about each country and what some of the important values are that you've learned from each culture. I think of all the places that I've lived, which is the USA, UK, UAE, and Malaysia, the the place that where I really fit in very, very fast, I think that was America. Uh, for obvious reasons, you know, grew up on American television and then had a lot of American friends. So it was pretty easy to assimilate. But when I went to other countries like Malaysia, and when I lived in Dubai, I realized that one of the main things that you need to do is respect the local culture and also try to learn their habits, their ways, because you know the saying goes, when you're in Rome, be a Roman. And I think it's very true. You will become a success story faster in any culture only if you do that, right? So uh, that is my take on uh, culture. It is, it is about friendship, it is about forming relationships, but most importantly, it is about understanding tradition. It is about understanding cultural differences and respecting it. And it is also about having a lot of fun. Definitely. It's, it's a, a great way to go about anything, just really embracing wherever you are. And for me, it's like the cool thing, going back to when I went to Amsterdam, the one time I've been to Europe, right. the thing that I really liked is that it wasn't like I was just in center city where all the tourists hang out. Like, right. like I checked out, I checked out all the touristy spots, but the beautiful thing was we were in the outskirts of the city at the University of Amsterdam. So I really got to embrace the local neighborhoods, a lot of the actual culture of the city because I was able to embrace it and really see what it's like truly living there. I got a much different taste of it. So obviously you've taken that to another level, actually living in all of these different places and, and taking in the culture head on. <laughs> well, it's mainly because I'm much older than you, Harry, and plus, you know, um, you know, I studied in England as well. You must be knowing that uh, England is a place where people from all over the world come to study, especially a lot of Europeans from mainland Europe. So I was able to see a myriad of cultures and, you know, uh, Greek, Italian, Spanish, Lebanese, Bulgarian, uh, South African, Japanese, Korean, German. So the best part was the food and the exchange of, you know, you get to talk about the different uh, places you can visit if you ever visit your friend in that country. And as much as I like, you know, all the different cultures, I come from India and India is a microcosm of cultures. You know, it is a whole universe of cultures and foods and different regional habits. It's just amazing. Sure, yeah. Uh, All right, Harry, I'm going to let you go. I know you're a busy guy with a busy schedule, so see you soon. Sounds good. That was fun, buddy. Thanks for having me.